Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are doing our budget motorcycles today. Usually we don't. I'm actually going to try switching it up a bit and release a bunch of these episodes in one week. I'm hoping that gets more interest. Uh, I don't know what to do. Um, it's kind of like dragging along, but you don't need to know how the sausage is made. So anyway, this is the Return to Ravnica Enemy Charm Cycle. We did the Allied Charms last week, so we're kind of closing out actually all the modal charms with this. So yeah. Please hit like and subscribe, it really makes such a big difference. I'm sure you're tired of channels nagging you, but please do it for my channel. Yeah, uh-huh. What are we talking about? So these are not so budget. I'm doing these ones last because they have one that's way over my $2 limit. I guess maybe not way over by magic standards. It's over $3, under four. Over my $2 limit for budget, but maybe not crazily. So this is, again, as I said, the Return to Ravnica enemy charm cycle. This time we did Allied last week. These are dual colored charms. As usual, I've tried to put them worst to best, but they are very situational. It's difficult to arrange these. Um, I've, I've had people make some very good arguments about like, oh, this one I put fifth should have been first. And it's like, yeah, I kind of agree with you. I don't know. So this is the second half of this cycle. Again, the enemy color pairs, which means the color and the one opposite it on the color wheel. So like the opposite colors for white are black and red. So you've got Boros and Orzov, our enemy color pairs. Number five, is it charm? So is it blue red, obviously? <coughs> Uh, so our modes, uh, counter target non-creature spell unless it's control pays two. All right. Is it charm deals two damage to target creature? Draw two cards, then discard two cards. That's probably the best option on there. Card draw discard, like, um, that'll give you at least some card sorting and is draw first and then discard, not discard then draw. So that's potentially better, but anyway. So if you want this for damage, um, you're gonna need something that increases damage from red sources. So I think you could use it that way. It's not really made for that, I think, but yeah. Taking out some pesky things might be possible. Um, the counter tax is something I'm not crazy about as well. It is It specifies non-creatures and it's a tax. Um, I don't know, like pick a lane, maybe make it a tax that works on everything or only non-creature spells, um, both. That's getting a little much. And with these, again, with these taxes, a lot of people don't like them. I think they're better than they're, they get credit for. Use them to counter other counter spells on your turn or to like interrupt people's second casting. That way they can't, usually don't have the extra mana to throw into like, shutting off the counter spell. They're a little more limited usage. Anyway, 14 cents. <clears throat> Number four. <clears throat> oh boy, my wife got me so sick. Oh boy. Orzhov Charm, white, black. Okay, so you can return target creature you control and all our auras controlled attached to that to its owner's hand. So in a, like an Aura Matters deck, that's very good. Now remember, if your creature gets sent to the graveyard, all the Auras are going with it. So if you want to save the creature and all the Auras, it gives you that option. In that situation, if you've got an Aura deck that's Orzov, an Orzov Aura Matters deck, then this is an amazing card. Otherwise, you probably don't care about that, but anyway. Um, the second option, destroy target creature and you lose life equal to its toughness. That's actually pretty good. That's not bad removal. Orzov is also really good at things like lifelink or gaining life in general. So you'll probably hit, be able to like do that without too much fear of like losing hit points anyway. Or losing life I should say. Return target creature card with converted mana cost one or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Again, in the right deck, that is good. 
Um, it does go straight to the battlefield, that's nice. Um, but one or less is uh, strange. That's very, like, yeah, limited, obviously. 12 cents. Number three. <clears throat> Simic Charm. So we got our green blue. Simic, I am liking more and more. The more I, like, build Simic decks and, like, look at Simic, the more I like it. But anyway. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. That's actually not bad, if, especially in Commander, if you want to go for a Commander win con. Um, what you want to do is get to like 21 damage or above in say one or two turns, probably one turn. With d adding Double Strike, that's plus six, plus six, or plus six damage in that turn. So that goes a long way to that 21, right? It's not going to do it by itself. It needs something else to give Double Strike. But basically, what you want to do with Double Strike is get your uh, commander's damage to 11. So 3 is a pretty nice chunk of that. <clears throat> or, permanents. All permanents you control gain hexproof. Again, permanents. Not just creatures. Not one creature. A lot of things will say, like, your creature, this creature gets hexproof. This is all permanents. So your, uh, your enchantments, your artifacts... Everything on the battlefield is just like suddenly removal proof. Like, yeah, if they use any kind of removal, this is a counter spell, basically. You can shut it off. It also works against things like abilities. So this, in a way, is limited, in another way, is much more open. Because you can counter abilities with this, as well as spells. They have to be targeted, though, is the main thing. So, like, board wipes? Don't care about this, right? or any kind of global effect, or a return target creature to its owner's hand. That is deceptively good. Okay, if you're taking out that one creature, that one like high CMC, you know, big mana cost creature and sending it back to their hand, you're kind of making them replay the last turn. It can really slow them down more than anything. It'll give you an opening and it'll just like slow their game down to the point where that might make the difference right there. Anyway, 70, 77 cents. Number two, Golgari Charm. I do like this one. I use this in my, uh, I pray, uh, but pray. I play Brawl, play Brawl, not pray. Yeah, not pray Brawl, but anyway, okay. So, uh, black and a green, choose one. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. If you can stack that with other effects that give minus to creatures, that gets crazy, right? Again, those minus counters, this doesn't care about indestructible and things like that. This is just gonna wipe out everything. So, yeah. Green, uh, sorry, Golgari in general is actually pretty good at those like minus effects too, so yeah. Uh, destroy target enchantment. Removal. Hey. I, you always want to have some enchantment removal and having it as an option out of three is really, really good. This is the one that stands out to me though. Regenerate each creature you control. So if someone plays a board wipe that destroys everything, regenerate your whole board. Everything. Tokens, all, all your creatures, just like, boom. They just basically don't move. There are some board wipes that specify you cannot regenerate from this, so that would uh, shut that down, but the vast majority of board wipes don't even bother with that. So yeah, this is going to be like a counter board wipe spell a lot of the time. Anyway, 82 cents, well worth it. Number one, Boros Charm. All right, so a red and a white. This is the one that is over my $2 budget range. This is why the, I put these last. Anyway. Uh, Boros Charm deals 4 damage to target player or planeswalker. So not creature. Um, too bad 4 to a creature would probably be put in removal. But planeswalker or player. That's really not bad either. You can kind of surprise a player if you're getting some damage through. Maybe they've done the math so that they're just squeaking by for that one more turn and you're just going to take them out. Also, Planeswalkers, it's amazing. The main thing you really want to avoid with Planeswalkers most of the time is that alt going off. 
So if you could just knock their, uh, you know, yeah, their loyalty counters down four, that's uh, going to do the job. It will really, yeah, it'll benefit you a lot. Next up, permanence you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Once again, board wipe counter. Also, what it does it say? It says permanence are indestructible. Not just creatures, artifacts, um, enchantments, all of your permanence, indestructible. Um, yeah, they're, they're, that's gonna like be beneficial in so many situations where just like making creatures indestructible will not help. Uh, yeah, there are uh, plenty of effects that are gonna like hit your enchantments and artifacts and things like that. You can counter even targeted removal spells can be countered with this pretty easily. And for two mana, it's worth it. Next up, target creature gains du double strike until end of turn, especially in commander. If you can suddenly give your commander double strike, a lot of times that's going to be like, oh, now you're looking at remo you know player removal, that commander damage win con. Uh, it'll go far. That's all I can say. 304. <laughs> The list. <clears throat> is it Charm? Um, 14 cents. Orzov Charm, 12 cents. Simic Charm, 77 cents. Golgari Charm, 82 cents. I think that might actually be my favorite. Boros Charm, 304. The Indestructible on its own is worth it. The other options are good too. Anyway, take it easy.